As we see the abdominal stretch now by Milano. The abdominal stretch. Can the Bulldog come out of it? Yes, he has. Oh, boy. 11 and a half minutes. You heard it from Jack Little, 11 and a half minutes. Coming in from behind now is Milano. On to the Bulldog. He takes him now over, rolls him around, hits him to the canvas. Two. Oh, close. That hand was halfway down. I can imagine King Curtis now watching on with Larry O'Day at this fellow because there's going to be some big action this week in World Championship Wrestling. And of course King Curtis and Larry O'Day being the best mates of Ronnie Miller will be watching anxiously trying to help Miller pick out the points that will be vulnerable to the big Bulldog Brower. And there's a headbutt by Milano on to Bulldog. He's staggering, staggering. The first mass wrestler to... This, and that Lord's gonna pay. That Lord at Curtis and Ariel's gonna pay. When my mother hears what happens to me, you're gonna be sure that she's gonna make everyone pay what happened to her little boy. And I don't care what no one says. This Lord's nothing but a pig. Look what he did to my face. He ruined my looks for life. He busted my nose and my eye. But when my mother, is that right? Right, right, right. right You'll right. see all of you. Get out of here. Jack Little, get your cabbage! Everybody get out of here! Get the hell out of here now! <laughs> That's incredible, Mark. That was Playboy Gary Hart, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yes. There was, I remember one incident when you fell under his evil spell, and you were generally regarded as a, as a goody. What, just run us through how that could happen, Mario, a bloke well, with integrity not, like yourself. I don't think it's a matter of a goody or baddie. That's just because I join his, uh, his side, or his, uh, yeah, his side. Because that time my contract was over, and he offered me some some amount of money to join his, his group. But uh, don't get me wrong, but there was almost a personality change. I, mean, I don't want to impose what I saw happening, but I almost saw you turning evil before my eyes. No, I didn't, because look, uh, wrestling is not what, what you do in the ring. It's it, 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 a lot to do with that, but it's all a matter of uh, uh, the personality, what the, the public give you, a good image or bad image, because mm -hmm. I used to kick I used to punch, I used to throw out the people from the top rope or whatever. But the people, for some reason, because I'm Italian, because I'm tall, because I'm whatever, they, they accept me as a good guy. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that would be true. It's not such a thing as bad and good, of course. Well, it's, all I can it, tell you is thank God more, you got away more, from the Playboy. It's more, it's more, it's more uh, wrestlers, uh, uh, they do anything to win. Yeah. So, to get in the top is where the money is and uh, the prestige and whatever you want to call it. But it, it's uh, except to the people, the image that they give you from the beginning when you come, the first time you walk in that ring, they say, hey, I like that guy because, of, I don't know, because just he's Italian, because he's tall, because he's fat, because whatever. Right, just on that yeah. note, something you used to do, could you give a, a message to the Italian community? You used to do that regularly. Yeah. Could you just do that uh, down the barrel on four there? Uh, in Italian? Yeah, in Italian. Eh. I think Voglio dare un forte abbraccio a tutti gli italiani e grazie per il supporto morale che mi avete dato tutti quest'anni per la lotta libera. Molte grazie. Ladies and gentlemen, the once popular partner of Larry O'Day, the heartthrob of World Championship wrestling fans all over the place, please welcome Ron Miller and Johnny Gray. <laughs> Long time, don't see Paul. How are you? <laughs> it's a bear hug! <laughs> Go, grab a seat, guys, please. No, just uh, please. 
someone in yeah, here. And right. Thanks, Ron. How are you? Uh, real good, thanks, Dean. <laughs> Great to see you, mate. No, no, we would have been good. You can sit there, but no, no, can the other I no, no, please move up. Come Mario, closer, Mario. Just uh, moving up a seat there. Come closer. Okay. Uh, Ron, how long since you've seen Mario? Well, we're talking about it just before. Uh, in nearly ten years now, I guess. Long time, yeah. Gets around, mate. Gets what, are you, around. what are you doing with yourself these days, Ron? Well, I'm involved in Sydney with uh, family community services, trying to help a few kids keep out of trouble, that type of thing. You know, they run away from home, so we uh, sort of get them back with their parents and help them through the court system and that type of thing and yeah. train who, a few who, kids in the in the clubs, you know. Who was your toughest opponent? Well, the biggest and hardest would be Andre the Giant, but I made friends with him. I thought there's better <laughs> ways, you know, mate. So. <laughs> and probably a bloke called, uh, well, Carl Cox, I guess. Killer Carl Cox. Right. When I first got into professional wrestling, you're, you're pretty green, and he was pretty experienced, so he gave me, gave me a pretty hard time. Johnny, who was your, uh, who was your worst battle? Probably one of the toughest, Steve, was a guy called, well, one of the most scientific was a guy called Jack Briscoe. He yeah. was a, a top guy and he was, uh, he kind of wiped the nap with me a few times. We've got some footage of, uh, we've got some footage of you, Ron. Let's, let's see if this brings back any memories for you. He's hit the abdominal stretch again. This could be it. Dylan on the outskirts of the ring watches. Hello. Oh, the referee has called, has pulled Phillips in with him. He's pulled the referee in and allowing Milano to release the abdominal stretch. The referee is out. And from the second strand, the Bulldog flies through the air. A big knee drop to the back of the neck on Mario Milano. The referee's out. What's going to happen here? What a sensation. Milano watches as the Bulldog climbs to the second strand. Look at Dylan. Here comes Ronnie Miller. Miller comes in. And look at the big champ go. Hang on to Bulldog power. He comes in. Kicks to the head. Oh boy, Tony Colori. What a match you got coming up next week between the Bulldog and Ronnie Miller. And here comes Larry O'Day. O'Day's in there, trying to help Mario Milano. Oh boy, this is a sensation today on World Championship Wrestling. Obviously, a lot of memories for you that, Ron. A lot of memories, yeah, pretty exciting stuff, wasn't can, it? Can I run, just pa I run some past some uh, names of some of the uh, some other wrestlers, some of the great wrestlers? Professor Tanaka. Is it? Retired what? living in New York. He's Retired living in New York. I believe so. What was he a professor of? Does anyone remember? He was. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, I don't really. Know. What was his uh, What was his favourite hold? Oh, he's pretty big with the karate. The karate. That yeah. time of thing. That was. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Killer Kowalski. What was? What, he had the claw hold, didn't he? The claw. No, no. Uh, Kowalski had the claw hold. Yeah, Kowalski. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boston, Boston Crab used to have. Uh, K yeah. Kowalski had the Boston Crab. Yeah. Well, the yeah, last I heard, Steve, he's retired, of course, and he's a photographer up in New York. So he's gone from one extreme to the other, hasn't he? That's extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to, uh, whatever happened to Killer Carl Cox? Well, he's back home in Texas once again. Yeah. Last I heard, and he's uh, got a government job there. I don't know exactly what, but it'd be uh, keeping law and order. I don't know. He's a he was, pretty rugged he sort was, of fellow. He was a very tough man, that yeah. uh, Killer Carl Cox. A man who saw it all as a man who did the commentary for World Championship Wrestling for 10 years. He called all the greats, he saw all the action close up and all the drama along with the uh, other commentators, Jack Little, Ted Whitten. Let's remember it with Paul Jennings. Over here, Paul. Yes. Over here. Oh. Paul, the, uh, you commentated some of the great wrestling matches. Indeed. And, yes. and bringing some of that footage, seeing some of that footage must bring back an awful lot of memories for you. It does. Uh, 1964 to 1973. And uh, uh, it was a great thrill working alongside the great Jack Little, who was my mentor, and, uh, and, and sort of commentating with these fellas, not only in the, in the Channel 9 the wrestling ring, but down at the uh, Festival Hall Saturday night, and it was practically a sellout every every second week, wasn't it? It was just absolutely enormous, the atmosphere. Uh, Jack, Jack uh, taught you. Jack, was, of course, was the doyen of uh, wrestling commentators. He certainly was. What a voice. What did Jack teach you? 
Well, he taught me uh, the holds, and basically there's only about eight holds, and I think they're all in this book here, actually, but there's about 25 of them, actually. Well, but, standard uh, holds. But standard holds. Well, holds. the uh, step-over toe hold, the uh, forward body slam, and the uh, four <laughs> Nelson, uh, just to name a few, figure four arm lock, forward body slam, and uh, that's about all you need to know. And there are the, some technical ones there we, we probably just uh, sort of skated over, if necessary. You know. And, and what, what, <clears throat> what did Jack bring to it? Can you do Jack? Can you... Oh, yes, I enjoy doing Jack's voice uh, as a... Uh, in my impersonation act, I usually do him at the end because I'd run out of voice after doing Jack, but he'd go like, say, Well, how about my plow drummings? I have never seen anything in my life. Bam! Bam! Thank you, man! That's all there is. There isn't any more. I think, I think we've got some footage of the great late uh, Jack uh, Little in action. Have a look at this. I am sure that you will agree with me that... Uh, we have seen the greatest wrestlers in the world during the past five years, and we have had some really exciting, thrilling moments. I'd like to call my colleague, uh, Paul, uh, Paul into the, uh, in here, if he's... Oh, look what Paul's got. Oh, well... Jack? Yes? On behalf of GTV Channel 9, our promoter, matchmaker Jim Barnett, and all the wrestlers, we thought we should present this cake to you, because you have been associated with... Uh, World Championship Wrestling on GTV Channel 9 since its inception five years ago. We thought it was only fitting that uh, you should be presented with this happy birthday cake to make the, mark the fifth anniversary. Well, thank you very much, Paul. But I mean, this, uh, I'll tell you, this cake, this cake is for all of us. I would like to say too and go on record. Uh, number one, my friend back there, Michael Hunt, is uh, one of the world's greatest reviewers. I've mentioned the wrestlers, and I've mentioned uh, matchmaker Jim Barnett, but I haven't mentioned you or the viewers. And I want to say, Paul, I've been a commentator for 37 years, and I want to say that, in my opinion, you have one of the biggest futures of anybody in television in Australia. And I'll tell you what, the viewers, we really owe the viewers something, because they're the ones that really should have this. And at least this won't go around very far, but we'll cut, uh, cut this cake up after the show, and for the people in the studio, we can have a little body cake to celebrate our fifth anniversary. we do a pleasant cake. You should have a great appetite, then. You're out here talking about the fifth anniversary for wrestling, and yet you give this pencil neck geeks like Spirios in this Milano all the time, and yet you refuse to give me equal time, and I demand equal time. <laughs> Barely believe it now. On that note, we're going to take a break. We'll discuss that and more. You'll be in the ring with me at Mr. the Hawkeye. And when you do, you better pack your bags. And you better leave Australia because I'm going to cripple you. You heard my neck and I'm going to tear you apart. Yeah! Yeah!